Hi, so for this session, we are going to understand what what we mean by surds. So what are surds? Um, and they, this is the key word that you'll hear right up until year 12, and you'll be seeing them and working with them all the time. And to understand what surds are, there are some key words we have to cover, or two main key words. And they are rational numbers and irrational numbers. Okay? Um, and we'll start off with rational numbers. To understand what rational numbers are, this is the basic thing that you have to remember, and that is rational numbers can be turned into fractions. If a number can be turned into a fraction, we say it is rational, and that's it. But the question now is, how do we know if a number can be turned into a fraction or not? Let's look at some examples. So how do we know if a number is rational? Now have a look at these two examples. We've got 0 0.5. And then we've got 0 0.3333, or we know we can write it like this, okay, um, with that little dot on top. Now, remember, a rational number can be turned into a fraction. Now, 0 0.5, can you turn that into a fraction? Well, that's quite easy. We can do it mentally. We know 0 0.5 is the same as a half. And straight away, we can see that this is rational because 0 0.5, it can be turned into a fraction. And to do it the mathematical way, we learnt this last year. If you've forgotten, we'll just quickly recap. To turn this into a fraction without using a calculator, so if you've got a decimal that ends, um, to do this, if you remember, 0 0.5, the fastest way, 0 0.5 is really over 1. So we times that to remove the decimal. To make 5 a whole number, we times it by 10. What you do to the top, you must do to the bottom. So we end up with fifth. Oh, end up with five over ten. Simplify that, and we get our half. So this is something that we just learned last year, and it's just showing you how you can actually turn a decimal that ends into a fraction just by. If it, you can use a calculator, but if you didn't have a calculator, you can do it by hand. So this kind of decimal is what we call finite. And that word finite, remember, means it ends. Or another word that we can use is it terminates. Okay, so basically we're saying if a decimal stops, it can automatically be turned into a fraction. And we know how to do that. If we have a look at this example here, 0 0.33333 or this one here, does this decimal ever end? No, it doesn't. So we say this one here is infinite the opposite of finite. So it's infinite. Um, but can we turn this into a fraction then? Well, we know that 0 0.3333, yes, its fraction is what? Its fraction is a third. And you can grab your calculator and you can check it. 1 divided by 3 is 0 0.33333. So even though its decimal never ends, this one here, for some reason, can be turned into a fraction. So these are two examples of rational numbers, one where the decimal ends, the other one where the decimal doesn't end. And the reason why we can turn 0 0.33333 into a fraction is because there's a pattern. It's really important you see that. The pattern in this example is what? 3 is repeating itself or 3 is recurring. And that's why it can be turned into a fraction. Now. You don't know how to turn this into a fraction yet. It's something you learn later on. It's a bit more complicated because the decimal never ends. But you know how to turn these ones into fractions. So if we come back to this definition, please make sure you write it down at some point. So rational numbers can be turned into fractions. And we know they can be turned into fractions because of two things. One, they have terminating decimals or decimals that end, for example, 0 0.5. Or the decimals may also be infinite, so never ending, but because they have a because they have recurring numbers or a pattern, they can be still be turned into a fraction. And that's just it. So a rational number can be turned into a fraction because of two things. It's either got a never it's either got an ending decimal like 0 0.5 or it has a never ending decimal but the decimal has a pattern. So one more example, 
is this number rational or irrational? If we have a look at it, is there a pattern in its decimal? Well, yes, there is. It's got 0 0.8672, 0.8672, and it's telling us it's going on forever. So the proper way of writing this would have been 0 0.8672, and align all over those. And because there's a pattern, this can be turned into a fraction. Okay, and I'll give you a challenge. Can anyone work out what the fraction is for this number? So now, when it comes to irrational numbers, it's basically opposite. Irrational numbers, they can't be turned into fractions, and that's it. But there is a reason why. And the reason is because they, they have a never-ending decimal, so an infinite decimal, that has no pattern, that has no recurring pattern. And examples of irrational numbers are pi and what we call thirds. Now, with pi, if you have a look at that pi poster in the classroom, um, you can see that it's a never-ending decimal and it goes on forever and ever and ever. And because there's no pattern, pi can't be turned into a fraction. And the same thing happens with thirds. Now, let's look at a few examples. So I want you to write these examples down and, and circle the ones that are irrational. So which one of these are irrational numbers? So if we have a look, the first one, We've got 0 0.871, and that line on top is telling us what? It's repeating itself. Because it's repeating itself, that means it's rational. It can be turned into a fraction. So this one here is rational. We don't have to circle it. Our next example, we've got the fraction 1 over 7 or 1 7. So straight away, we know this is rational. It's already a fraction. So that's pretty straightforward. Number 3. Let's have a look at our decimal. We've got 2.871543262121, and it's telling us it's going on forever. Can we see a pattern at this stage? No, we can't. So we assume this is irrational because there is no pattern and the decimal goes on forever. So that one is irrational. Number four, once again, our decimal is infinite. It goes on forever. But is there a pattern? Let's have a look. 0 0.712712. Yes, there is a pattern. So this is also rational. It can be turned into a fraction because there's a pattern in its decimal. So out of all these examples, there was one irrational number. So now to understand so now hopefully you can understand what thirds are. Thirds are irrational numbers. So we know what irrational means. It's a decimal that never ends and has no pattern. Okay? But they're called thirds because these kind of numbers have the radical sign. And that's just it. And for example, if we have the square root of 3, let's do an example together. So the square root of 3, is there a number times itself twice, the same number, to give us 3? I, I can't think of a number. If I try, well, 1 times 1 is 1, and then 2 times 2 is 4. So it has to be in between 1 and 2. Um, so grab your calculator and before pushing the square root of 3 and see if you can work out the closest decimal to, to give you 3. And you'll notice it's impossible. Maybe the closest decimal could be 1.7 um, or you can try other numbers. But if I put this in my calculator, I get this. 1.732054. That's what my calculator shows. Some models round off the last number, so it might be different, but just remember your calculator cannot fit an infinite number that has no pattern. Okay, and you can see there is no pattern, and so this decimal here, because there's no pattern and it goes on forever, we say it's irrational. Okay, remember, remember the calculator, it stops for you at a point because it can't fit it on its screen, <clears throat> but you know that there is no pattern and it goes on forever. And this is an example of a third. We call this a third because it's got the radical sign that, in this case, the square root symbol. If I had the square root of, let's say, um, eight, is this a third? Yes, it is. Because is there something times something to give us eight, the same number? No, there isn't. Um, and if I push the square root of 8 on my calculator, I get 2.82842725. There is no pattern, 
So this is also a third. It's irrational and it's got the radical sign. What about this one here, the cube root of 8? Is this a third? Well, is there a number times itself three times to give us 8? Well, actually there is. The cube root of 8 is actually a whole number 2. And because it gives us a number 2, which is can be written as 2 over 1, which is sort of in fraction form, because of that, this is not a third. This is just a rational number. So this is not a third because we were able to get rid of the radical sign and have a rational number. So final thing, I want you to write these questions down, these numbers down, and circle the irrational numbers. And then you can check with the, with the person next to you. Thank you.